Yeah, so today I want to work up, uh, talk about some joint work with my student, uh, Abir al Amadia at University of Washington. Um, some of what I'm going to talk about is uh, has been posted on the on the archive uh, recently, and as the title suggests, it's a um, connection between sort of determinantal uh, representations and the principal minor map. So there's no explicit rigidity theory, but there is at least real algebraic geometry. Um, so the the question uh, at hand um, is when you're studying the the principal minor map. So this is going to be a, a map that eats a, a, a an n by n matrix. In this case, I'm going to take them to be real and symmetric, but one could do you know, whatever. We could put in any space of matrices we like. Um, and the output is a, a vector of length two to the n. Um, uh, so there will be one uh, entry for every subset of one through n. Um, and the output will be the determinant, the principal minor um, obtained by taking the rows and columns in, indexed by that subset and taking the determinant. Where by convention, I take the, the empty set, um, the empty principal minor just to be one. So just by convention, a empty set, I'll take to equal one. Um, and the, the question I want to talk about today is uh, to understand the image of this map, to understand the, the set of all vectors of length to the n that come as the, the principal, the vector of principal minors of some real symmetric matrix. Um, and in particular, so this is uh, the image of uh, the principal minors are polynomials in the entries of the matrix. Um, the image will be a semi-algebraic set, and I want to understand, you know, I want to do, you find out defining polynomial equations and inequalities that cut out this image. Um, so just as a, a very tiny example, um, so for n equals 2, we can just do this very easily by hand. Um, so I have some mystery... Uh, real two by two real symmetric matrix. I compute the vector of principal minors. I'm going to get a sub empty set. I'll write that a empty set. A one two. A one two is going to be one. A one one. A two two. And then then just the whole determinant. Um, and so here the image, um, we, can, we can just write out explicitly. So the first coordinate will always be one. Um, and I can have any uh, diagonal elements that I like. Um, and then the only, and then I have some, um, some determinant. And the only restriction I have um, is that a1 times a2 minus the determinant, a12 is squared and equal to zero. Because that difference is exactly um, the square of the off diagonal uh, entry. And, and the square of a real number has to be one like it. Um, and you can check that if I have, um, if I line this up, I can explicitly reconstruct the matrix. I just take A11 to be A1, A12 A2 to be A2. Um, and the off diagonal entry, I can pick to be plus or minus the square root of this non-negative. OK. Um, and then it's going to get more interesting for a higher um, but th this is the sort of thing that we want to do. Um, so um, studying this, this image as a semi-algebraic set, um, this was introduced in a paper by uh, Olga Holtz and Baron Sturmfels in 2006. Um, and they noted, um, they noted several properties of this map. Um, one is that the image is a closed semi-algebraic subset of R to the 2 to the n. Um, its dimension is just going to be the same as the dimension of the space of uh, real symmetric matrices, which is n plus one choose two. 
Um, and it's also invariant under some, some group actions. Um, one thing that's not too hard to see is that it's invariant uh, under an action of the symmetric group Sn, which acts on this, the matrix uh, by permuting the indices of the rows and columns and acts on the, um, are the subsets of one through n the, the same way, by permuting the, the indices. Um, a more interesting, a less trivial action um, is, is one of a, a product of SL2 R. So, so two by two matrices with a determinant one, we get one for every, um, for every uh, uh, index one through n. And it turns out that this, the image of this principal minor up is also invariant under an action of this group. And I'll say a little bit more about what the actual, the group action is um, a little later. Um, so just, so as an example, so we saw, um, we saw this for already for n equals two, we can briefly think about what should happen for n equals three. Here, the, the dimension of the image of the principal minor map um, should be four choose two, which is six. Um, and it's going to lie inside of the hyperplane A sub empty set equals one inside of R8, R to the two to the three. Um, this hyperplane has dimension seven. Um, and we said the image of the principal line have to, has dimension six. So we'd expect it to lie inside of a hypersubplast. Expect to find sort of one defining equation um, for this image. Um, and in this paper uh, from 2006, they find they find out what this um, this equation is, this hypersurface, um, and it's the following polynomial of degree four um, in the eight entries of this vector. Um, and those of you who spend time with uh, tensors will will recognize this polynomial. Um, as Cayley's hyperdeterminant of a, of a two by two by two tensor. I'm going to call this monomial the hyperdeterminant of this, this vector um, of, the, of the principal minus. And so it, for, for n equals three, this is, this is the defining equation. Um, inside of inside of this space. And you can check that this is invariant under um, permutations of the indices one, two, three. Um, and it's also uh, invariant under an action of SL2, three. Um, for n greater than equal to three, so the hyperdeterminant, uh, and when n is greater than three, you can also start acting on this by this large group, and all images of this polynomial are going to vanish um, on the on the image of the principal minor map. Um, and in this paper, uh, Ola and Baron conjecture that this is sort of sufficient um, to to cut out. The, the image of the principal minor, at least over, uh, over C. Um, and this was proved by Luke Uding in 2011. He showed that um, if you have a, a vector of length two to the n, then it's the vector principal minors of some uh, symmetric matrix over the complex numbers. Uh, if and only if the, the, this hyperdeterminant um, applied to the, so all of the um, polynomials you get by acting on the hyperdeterminant with this group uh, equals zero. Um, and so what, um, what I did with my student at Beer is we gave a, another proof of this um, and extended it 
also over to, to re many uh, different uh, fields, but in particular to the real numbers. Um, and in this case, we get some extra defining inequalities like the ones we had seen before. Um, and uh, the way we do this, the goal of this talk is going to be to understand um, understand this result uh, through the study of determinantal representations of, of multi-affine polynomials. Um, so here's the connection. If you have a, a real symmetric matrix, um, then one can associate to it the following polynomial that you get by um, taking just the diagonal matrix of the variables x1 through xn uh, and adding your matrix and taking the determinant of the resulting matrix. Um, and if you actually expand out uh, this polynomial, what you'll see is that the, the coefficients of, of various monomials are exactly the, the principal minors. Um, so the, this polynomial is going to be multi-affine, meaning that every variable shows up only with degree, uh, degree one. So in particular, the monomials will just be products of disjoint variables. So they correspond to subsets of one through n. Um, and the coefficients are going to be the principal minors corresponding to the complementary subset. In particular, the constant coefficient you get by setting all the variables equal to, uh, to zero is just the whole determinant of, of the matrix A. Take the coefficient of x1, and then it's going to be the, what you'll get is the, um, the complementary one, and so on. And again, just to be as explicit as possible, if I take f, here's the determinant of x1 plus a11, x2 plus a2. Um, then I get exactly, so I get a. 1, 1, x2, a2, 2, 2, x1, uh, plus the determinant. Um, and so another way to, to ask this question of, of characterizing the image of the pencil minor app is to characterize uh, determinantal polynomials, um, determinant, uh, multi-affine determinantal polynomials. Um, and in fact, uh, using this setup, one can actually state the, the action, this group action fairly explicitly. Um, so the corresponding group actions on the set of polynomials, um, the symmetric group acts on the set of polynomials just by permuting the indices of the variables. Um, and if I have an, an element of SL2, um, then this naturally acts on a single coordinate by a fractional linear transformation. Um, that is, so I'm gonna, this is gonna, if I let this act on the first coordinate, then I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace x1 um, by ax1 plus b over cx1 plus d, and then clear, clear denominators. Of this. And since this only has degree uh, one in x1, I only have to multiply by uh, one, cx1 plus d to the power one. Um, and so I'm gonna let a, a copy of SL2 of R act on each coordinate in this way. Um, and, and one way we're gonna characterize um, determinantal polynomials is by uh, these polynomials called uh, Rayleigh differences. Um, which are defined as follows. So for any, if I pick any two indices, i and j, um, I'm going to define the, the Rayleigh difference with respect to i and j to be the following. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of i times the derivative with respect to x of j minus f 
uh, times the derivative with respect to both, both variables. Um, so if I start with something of degree at most one in each variable, then you can, can see that this polynomial will have degree at most two in each variable. Um, and in fact, it's um, all of the, the terms with the variables x sub i and x sub j and them are going to cancel out. So this is actually going to be a polynomial in the remaining variables. Um, I'm going to call multi-quadratic, so degree at most two in each variable. For example, so if we took uh, f to be the second, the degree two elementary symmetric polynomial in three variables, uh, and we take delta one, two of f, we take the derivative with respect to x1, we get x2 plus x3, take the derivative with respect to x2, that is x1 plus x3, subtract off the uh, f, let's write f, times the derivative with respect to both, which is just one. Uh, and if you, have, you expand this out, you see uh, a lot of cancellation happens. Uh, and what you're left with is just the single term x3 squared. Um, these polynomials uh, show up um, several places. Uh, one of them is in something called the uh, theory of stable polynomials. I'm not going to define this, but if you're uh, already familiar with it, then um, you can, if you have a, a multi affine polynomial, you can test whether or not it is stable um, by exactly by the non-negativity uh, of all of these polynomials as functions on R. Um, but we're interested in uh, determinantal representations. Um, um, so actually in a, in a paper with Mario Kumar and Daniel Plowman from 2013, we showed that uh, a multi-affine polynomial is, is determinantal if and only if all of these, uh, these Rayleigh differences, delta ij, are squares as polynomials, um, as real polynomials. Um, so for example, x3 is a square. You can check that you can write, um, maybe I'll leave it as an exercise <laughs> to, the, uh, to the audience, um, but you can check that you can write this polynomial is the determinant of the linear symmetric matrix. Um, and the, the main idea of the forward direction of this is something called Dodgen condensation, which is it's a method developed in the 1960s in order to sort of recursively compute determinants. Um, and it's based on the following uh, identity of the minors of a matrix. Um, so if I have some square matrix M, uh, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to, in, in this, I'm going to use M sub II to denote the matrix I get um, by removing row I and column I uh, from M I I uh, from the matrix M goes to M, I remove row column. Um, then the identity is that if you, you take the, the minor obtained after you remove row and column I, multiply it by the, the minor you get by removing row and column J, subtract off, um, the minors you get by switching uh, which rows and columns you remove. So for example, here we remove row i column j uh, versus row j column i. We multiply those two minors together, then what you end up with 
um, is a product of the minor uh, obtained by removing both row, rows i and j and both columns i and j times the whole determinant. Um, that's the equation. Um, and in fact, if you have a, a polynomial M of, of this, if M, sorry, if M is not the determinant, but is the actual matrix, um, so diagonal matrix of the variables plus some matrix A, um, then, then these minors are, um, are exactly the, the derivative of f with respect to these variables. So what you get is that the derivative of f with respect to x of i times the derivative of, uh, of f with respect to xj is something, and in particular a square, because this matrix is symmetric. Um, and this has to equal uh, the derivative of f with respect to both, both variables times, times the polynomial f. Um, and so if you switch around these two terms, you get exactly that, that delta ij uh, is the square of some polynomial. Um, and the polynomial in question is exactly um, the determinant of this submatrix, non-principal submatrix. Um, and so we can use this. Uh, we can use this to get equations. Um, so, for example, in order to find the hyperdeterminant, let's think about this for n equals three. Um, so here we have some some polynomial. We have eight terms for every subset uh, of one, two, three. We have a s, and then the monomial of complementary terms. Uh, if we take, say, delta 1, 2 of f, uh, so this is going to be a, a polynomial in the remaining variable x3 of degree at most 2. Um, and so we can write this you know, as ax. Uh, Um, ax3 squared plus bx3 plus c. And if we want to know the condition that this is a square, it's exactly the, the discriminant. Um, so delta 1, 2 of f is a square. Uh, if and only if the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, uh, and the extremal coefficients are non negative A and C. Um, and, and if you actually do this out, if you write out these coefficients uh, in terms of the original parameters, um, what you find is that this discriminant is exactly the hyperdeterminant. So we wrote down four. Um, and these extremal coefficients are also very nice on our sort of the familiar inequalities that we, that we saw um, that, have, that are uh, non-negative. Um, and so, so by this characterization of determinantal polynomials, um, we, can, we can translate this into an explicit equation. Um, and sort of more generally, the if we if we ask you know so um, about the set of, of polynomials of degree at most two in each variable um, that is a square, that is a square of some real polynomial of degree at most one in each variable. Um, this set is also invariant under the group action of SL two R to the n. Uh, uh, across SN. And um, so this is the same as um, sort of univariate restrictions of this polynomial 
uh, being a square for the univariate we restrictions we take are um, you know setting you know all the variables but one equal to zero but we do this at, after we act on the polynomial uh, by all of the group elements. Um, and so putting all of this together um, actually gives us a, a characterization um, uh, of the image of the principal minor map. Um, so here we recover uh, Luke's results. And you can say that, uh, so a vector of length two to the n is the image of some real symmetric matrix under this map. Um, if and only if uh, it satisfies all of the images of the hyperdeterminantal equations um, and uh, all of the inequalities that we get um, from this little quadratic inequality that we started out with. Um, and I've been talking about, so this is what happens over the, the real numbers. Um, and in fact, one of the things we found was that the, the proofs um, were fairly general. Um, and so this is still true if you replace uh, the, the, the real numbers with uh, any uh, unique factorization domain, uh, except for one, except for F3. Um, and then the, the condition um, actually stays the same. So this, you just replace this by any ring R, and then this gets replaced by any ring R. Um, and then the only, the only sort of subtlety is that non-negativity over more general rings gets replaced with, uh, is a square, square. And actually, this still holds uh, at that level of genera. Um, but in particular, this gives a characterization of the um, image of the principal minor map of the real numbers. Um, and so one of the uh, things that we've been working to do since then is generalize this to other spaces of matrices beyond symmetric matrices. Um, and again, since this is a real and break geometry conference, um, the one I want to talk about is uh, another nice real vector space of matrices, which is Hermitian matrices. Um, so if I let uh, H sub n, not the, the set of n by n Hermitian matrices, so complex matrices, uh, A, so that A is equal to its uh, conjugate transpose. Um, and one could ask the same question. What is the image of the set of Hermitian matrices under the principal minor? Um, and one could use the, the same identity as we did before. Um, and, and what it gives is the following. Uh, so if we have, um, can write down a, a polynomial uh, once again, um, just by taking the determinant of the diagonal matrix of the variables plus our, our matrix A. Um, and then uh, this, this Dodgson condensation identity, um, so we had the derivative of F with respect to the variable Xi, derivative of F, X, of f with respect to variable xj times the derivative of, of f with respect to both variables times the original polynomial. Um, and this was equal to the product of two off diagonal linears. Um, when the matrix was symmetric, this was a square. Um, if the matrix A is Hermitian, uh, then these will these minors will be complex, uh, complex conjugates. Um, so that we do polynomials in x1 through xn with complex coefficients. And if I take the conjugate of all the coefficients I get for this polynomial, I get exactly this. Um, and so that proves one direction of the following theorem, 
which is that if I have that a polynomial, if a polynomial uh, F can be written in this form where A is some Hermitian matrix, um, then all of these Rayleigh differences are going to be Hermitian squares. So it can be written as, as G times its conjugate uh, in, in the form G times the G conjugate, where G is some multi affine polynomial with complex coefficient. Um, and, and actually, what we show is that the converse of this holds also. Um, so if you, you know that all of these delta ij's are Hermitian squares, then you can reconstruct um, this determinantal representation. Uh, and maybe I'll just say a, a quick, a very uh, brief uh, word about the the proof of this is that you can actually sort of reconstruct. Um, so if you have the, the way the proof goes is, is actually reconstructing um, not the original matrix, um, original uh, determinantal representation, but something called the adjugate of this. So the matrix of, um, uh, of n minus one by n minus one minors. Um, and from which come exactly from this factorization. And from that, if you take sort of the, the adjugate or the inverse of this again, one, one can get back the matrix. Um, just to compare this to the n equals three case. So here, um, again, we take say delta one, two of f, and this is some quadratic. Um, quadratic and the remaining variable x3. Um, if we want to write this as a, a Hermitian square, as something complex polynomial times its conjugate, um, this, this just means that the, the roots have to be complex. Um, so this is going to happen if and only if the discriminant of this polynomial is Less than equal to zero. Uh, and, and again, uh, these coefficients have to be non negative. Um, and as we said before, this, this discriminant in this case is exactly the hyperdeterminant of the corresponding matrix. Uh, so we see that the, the image for the symmetric matrices. Um, image of the, the symmetric matrix actually lies on the boundary of the image of the Hermitian matrices. Um, and if you want to extend this uh, to, to get equations and inequalities um, for more general n, uh, then the first thing to do is, is to try and characterize um, polynomials that can be written as Hermitian squares. Um, it's not hard to check that this, that being the condition of being a Hermitian square is invariant under the, the same group action. Um, and uh, in this case, um, as we saw, sort of you don't get any equations um, from being a univariate uh, Hermitian square. So one has to but you can still get away with uh, restrictions to only two variables. So I could set um, all of the other variables, all but two variables equal to zero, um, and look at the, the set of square Hermitian squares in two variables. Um, and I will get some equations. <laughs> uh, and what I can do is act on this, act on these equations by the whole group, by this whole group action. Um, and what this leads to is that a, a polynomial is a Hermitian square, if and only if so the, co the coefficients of the polynomial satisfy some inequalities, which I'm not going to write explicitly, but of, you know, uh, of this type, um, and a, a collection of polynomials of degree six. Um, and it's not just a hypersurface, so you're going to have, you necessarily have more than one. Um, and then just as before, um, this, this translates to an explicit set, an explicit just semi algebraic description of the image of, of the space of Hermitian matrices under the principle. Um, 
So the, the image of the space information matrices under this map uh, is cut out by the, the orbit of um, sort of the inequalities that one would expect um, uh, and a collection of, of polynomials of degree 12. And take the orbit of these under a large, uh, under the large group. Um, Um, and we're, so th these are sort of the collections of matrices that I think are would be interesting to, to this crowd. We're also trying to, um, to sort of use these techniques over other, other fields and things and it seems to be going on. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'll just, yeah, I'll just say that, uh, so this, these questions of, um, characterizing the principal minor map, um, seem to be very amenable to sort of techniques that have been previously used to understand um, uh, determinantal representations of, of polynomials. And I will stop there and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for the very interesting talk, Cynthia. Are there any questions? Um, I, had a, I had a quick question. So you said um, uh, about Cayley's hyperdeterminant and it, how it appears in the study of tensors. I wonder if you could say a bit more about what all this says, like back on the tensors side. Yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, certainly another, just formally another way, if you have a, a vector of length two to the n, one could associate that with a two by two by two by two, you know, n times tensor. Um, and, and this, even this polynomial, um, where did it go? Uh, yeah, this polynomial, you know, you can imagine contracting by um, the very, the, vectors one xi along sort of each of your two by two by two things. Um, and that's what this polynomial is. Um, yeah, in, I'd like to understand the, the tensor connection uh, better. Um, and this action of SL2 is also very tensor friendly. It's, it's exactly sort of, uh, acting on one of the one of the coordinates. Um, yeah, I I mean, I guess the short answer is that I don't I don't know exactly um, what it means for the tensor to come in this form to come as the the principal minors of the matrix. Um, I mean, the techniques that Luke uh, uses are very, he very much uses the sort of tensor aspects of this and the representation theory of, of these groups. Um, yeah, I'm very, I, I'd be very interested in knowing what the, um, if there's more sort of connections to, to tensors, but I don't have a good, but I can't tell you anything so interesting. Um, um, okay, yeah, th thanks a lot and thanks for the interesting talk. Are there any other questions? Well, if uh, not, quick question, that's... silly question. Oh, sorry. Easy. Go ahead, Sui. Hi. Is the Dodgson condensation, is that Charles Dodgson? Do you know? Yeah, he's the guy who wrote Alice in London. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Dodgson, yeah, so where did it go? Dodgson condensation, uh, I forget his, his, he has some long, I think British uh, name, but his pen name is Lewis Carroll, who wrote, um, who wrote Alice in Wonderland. Fun fact. Yeah, same guy. <laughs>